let's begin everybody now um so this afternoon a part of our syllabus in gender and society is a lesson on comprehensive sexuality education so with that um one of the discussions in comprehensive sexuality education is pregnancy contraception sexually transmitted illnesses and hiv aids which are um some some topics so that are not usually discussed in school however um in in planning this subject um your teachers not here in liceo have seen that it's quite important to teach students about comprehensive sexuality education um, since since um some of the problems in society that we do have right now are often traced to um, ignorance, I guess. Uh, most Filipinos are not educated primarily with, with in terms of sexuality, not because of the fact that we are a religious country, both in Christianity and Islam. So these topics are rather taboo in our society. So. However, um, it's noted that it is quite beneficial for young people to know about sexuality, you know, having a good education about sexuality. Um, so, because according to the United Nations, you know, um, that is quite important to address the problems that we have nowadays, such as um, STIs, you know, avoiding sexually transmitted illnesses, even to a degree, addressing problems like rape or sexual harassment no? and to a degree it can also help us with our relationships and our understanding of ourselves so um this afternoon we are pleased to have our guest speaker kevin gaitan who is the executive director of project sex z in negros uh kevin may i ask what particular city in negros right so I'm Kevin um, of Negro San and Young Leaders Institute. We are the ones implementing Sexy. Um, we are based in Bacolod City, but our coverage is um, the whole Negros Occidental. And Sexy was implemented in the city of Cadiz um, last year, February, and it's ongoing right now. Or actually, earlier we had Sexy in Barangay Villamonte in Bacolod also. Awesome. So that is in Thank Bacolod. You. And thank you, Kevin, um, Negros Occidental. So um, I am going to pass the floor on to Kevin as of now, class. So uh, let's all welcome Kevin. We, maybe we can unmute our microphones, give a round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Hi, thanks, Kevin. Okay, please uh, unmute. Let me share. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So I'm not really familiar in how we use um, Google Meet, but uh, let me open another one on my phone so that I can see myself and you also. It's a bit, um, I'm a bit uncomfortable not seeing people while I speak. Exactly. Hold on. Okay, Kevin. <laughs> So um, this afternoon, it will be very short um, and a quick discussion on um, sex education and comprehensive sexuality, maybe. Um, we'll try to cover as much as we can. And um, I know you will be a laboratory scientist in the future. Hold on. Hello. 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 Can you hear me better? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, that's. Um. That's... So, we will talk about sex. Now, most of the time, um, we do not talk about sex in our families, in our family gathering, on the dinner table. Um, but it's important to know and to to see that um, we need to talk about sex. Now. Uh, and I can also speak Bisaya. 
I have friends from CBO. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I think if you have questions and um you know if we can talk more on the on the language you are most comfortable of speaking, that would be better. So um we believe that we are losing our girls because in Southeast in the Asia and the Pacific, uh Asia Pacific is the only region in the world where teenage pregnancy is on the rise and rising fast. And it's sad that in the Philippines, we are also rising fast on this. And in Southeast Asia, out of 1,000 childbirths, there are 47 from teenage mothers ages 15 to 19, and that is from the data from 2014. And complications from childbirth is the number one killer of teenage girls in, in Southeast Asia. So in the Philippines, um, according to the Population Commission, 24 babies are born to teenage mothers every hour, and almost 200,000 Filipino teens get pregnant annually. And this was in August 2019, a data that about 530 teenagers get pregnant daily. So it's kind of alarming because it does not only tell us of, of sex in itself, but of child abuse cases also. And um, we will talk more about that. Now, in according to the CNN, in 2018, there are 7,037 reported cases nationwide. The very alarming rate. And someone is raped every hour in the Philippines. And that is not okay. Even just a single person being raped is not okay. And this one is someone is ra being raped every hour. So this is something that you must be alarmed of. Now, rape cases is growing at an average of 19.08, and that's very high. Very high rate of, of rape cases is not really good. Now, Project Sexy is, um, I don't know if I can share this video if there's an audience. So you can you can share audio, Kevin, through sharing the um, tab. Thanks. So if you press uh, oh. in Google Meet, so um, press present present a tab. But we can only play videos through through um, online. So for example, if your video is on Facebook, you can share your tab on Facebook, and then it will play. We can hear the, the audio. But if it's in the computer, oh. yeah. I will try to um, look at it later. Okay. Anyway, so um, yeah. So we'll, this afternoon we'll talk about sexual health, um, which is healthy sexual development and freedom from illness, disease, disability, violence, and other harmful practices related to your sexuality. And of course, um, equitable and responsible relationships and sexual fulfillment. Um, let me just clarify that once when, when we do sexual health and rights education, it does not necessarily mean that we promote that you on you you um, engage in sexual activities, nor we encourage you to try whatever there is to try. But we are here to educate so that we'll have informed decision making in in the future. And sexual rights are your rights, your basic rights, so that you can decide freely and responsibly on all aspects of your sexuality, including promoting and protecting your sexual and reproductive health. Be free from discrimination, coercion, or violence in your sexual lives and all your sexual decisions. And expect, sorry, expect and demand equality, full consent, mutual respect, and shared, resp shared responsibility in sexual relationships. Um, sex and sexual relationship is always a shared responsibility and does not only um, rely on one person. It does not rely on just the man or the, the woman or if you're on um, a homosexual relationship, it does not only rely on one person. What next is um, reproductive health. This is the condition which the reproductive functions are and processes are accomplished in a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. 
and your reproductive rights. Um, it all, it, this includes rights concerning you if you want to bear a child, if you want to, um, how many child do you want to, to have in the future, and to attain the highest standards of sexual and reproductive health. So these four are in this quadrant or summarized in this quadrant. So if you can take a screenshot, that would be nice. All right. So, yeah. Um, let's skip this again because this is another video. So let's understand HIV and other sexually transmitted infections. Um, before I proceed, may I know what um in 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 Bisaya, what is sex? What is sex in Bisaya? Or yeah, the language in in Tigayan is Bisaya, right? Makikilawas. Justin. Hi, sorry. What else? Um, the, the, the ones that we use as teenagers. Or the ones that we use in the streets when we talk about sex. Uh, if I may now, it's a, a, a little bit of a bad word, iot. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, there. So why, are, why am I asking this, this, um, this one? Because the mere um, acknowledging that iot is not a bad term, or iot is iot, and and um, recognizing our, our private body parts, the um, calling utin as utin, that's that's um, the way forward, because this prevents sexual abuse and um, exploitation. Um, what what do you call of of the women's reproductive organ? In Bisaya, can somebody um, tell me who, who, what you call your uh, private, uh, the the women, the girls' private body part in Bisaya? Bilat, 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 and then the the anus is. I guess boto. Hmm. Mm, okay. Uh the anus. Uh, All right, so let's talk about HIV and other STDs. So um, STIs are are no, also known as STDs or sexually transmitted um, diseases. The term STI, not the school STI, is sometimes uh, preferred uh, because there are few STDs such as chlamydia that can infect a person without causing any actual disease or, or any, in other words, unpleasant sim symptoms. Someone without symptoms may not think of themselves as having a disease, but they may still have an infection that needs treating. Uh, these are mainly passed from one person to another during sex. That's why it's called sexually transmitted infections. And um, the three ways that we can have, um, that we can um, contact with the virus is through vaginal, anal, and oral sex. Most sexually transmitted uh, diseases will only affect you if you have sexual contact with someone who has an STD. But why only most, not all? Because there are some sexually transmitted infections that can be, um, that we can contact uh, despite that what we did not um, engage in sex. So, hold on. So what are the symptoms of, of STIs? These are just some of the symptoms. Soreness, unusual lumps or sore, itching, pain when urinating, and unusual discharge from the genitals. But we cannot conclude um, that these are STIs already. If we test, if we do not do STI test, then we cannot conclude that these are um, sexually transmitted infections. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so these are the examples. Uh, it's more of, there's a lot of visuals in this presentation because it's um, designed for community education. So, so that you will also see how it looks like. So there are three types of STIs. One is bacterial, second is um, parasitic, and the third is viral. We will go on um, one and one. I know um, you will be discussing this maybe further with 
um, with you as medical uh, laboratory scientists in the future, and you'll have more understanding of this um, compared to us, maybe because you'll you'll know the 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 uh, structure of this um, infections. So bacterial STIs are chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. So what are these? Um, chlamydia are those that infect the urethra, the rectum, and the eyes in both sexes and the cervix in women. It leads to fertility problem for women and transmitted to, through genital, genital contact and sexual intercourse with someone already infected. And um, symptoms may usually show between one to three weeks after exposure. So it's not um, immediate for chlamydia. Um, among these, uh, among the most common bacterial STIs in the world is chlamydia also. And uh, passed by having unprotected oral, anal, or vaginal. So what do you call um, oral sex in, in Cagayan? I don't think there's a term for it, guys. Is there? <laughs> Parang walang term. <laughs> There's Once no term. Siguro, eh, chupa, ano? <laughs> mm -mm. So I think that's um, uh, the widely used term for oral sex. Um, how about uh, anal sex? Na, na amoy ko an, direct translation on anal sex. Wala. Wala, wala, Kevin. <laughs> but um, in, in, in our case, in Negros, there's... Um, so, uh, there's chupa, there's um, salom if it's uh, for women, uh, mm -hmm. if the woman is receiving the, the, the oral sex. Mm -hmm. And um, for, for anal sex, that's what we call pabuli. So these are the things that we allow our participants to, 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 tell, to tell us because this um, also increases our... Um, the call this increases our um, understanding and awareness of these matters at hand. Because most of the time, we are really ashamed of talking about sex. It's not usual that we talk about sex. So um, through our sessions, we hope to, to normalize talking about sex because of the rising cases that we have right now. So condoms can help prevent the um, spread of chlamydia during vaginal and anal sex. And dental dams or condoms can be used during oral sex. Um, chlamydia is no most uh, have no symptoms. The infection can be cured with a single dose of antibiotics, and the person can get infected again. So um, you have to get tested. So chlamydia is curable. That means um, when you uh, contact the virus, you get infected. You had um, your antibiotics, you'll get cured with uh, from chlamydia. So this is what it looks like. It has um, discharges. No, um, it has uh, genital discharges. So muragtulo siya, same siya of gonorrhea. O gonorrhea is the same. It's also bacterial infection and passed by having unprotected oral or vaginal sex. Um, it's the same actually with chlamydia um, and but chlamydia does not have, um, sometimes no, people does not have symptoms, while gonorrhea, um, there's always um, discharge. There, um, hold on. So, it's also curable, but um, one of the Sometimes when we, women, um, wala jud siya ikuan, um, more of symptoms. Mostly sa men, in I um, discharge and it's very painful um, for when you're in it. So it's it looks the same. These are severe. This one is a severe case already um, of of gonorrhea, and oh, this is a vagina with gonorrhea. So it leads also to fertility problems, but this can be cured with um, antibiotics. So. It's important to get tested. So syphilis. Syphilis is a is an infection no, ca caused by Saponema pallidium, which is uh, used to be known as the pox. So usually sex um it's also of course um sexually transmitted, um, but sometimes can be passed from an infected woman 
to woman to her unborn child. And um, it's a rare STI. Uh, it's a very rare STI. But it can, cure, can cause serious damage to our body if not cured. And same, it's oral, anal, and vaginal sex. Same prevention, um, condoms and dental dams. And it has a, way, a wide range of symptoms that are confused with other illnesses. And some doesn't have symptoms at all and can be cured by antibiotics. Um, one of the, of the symptoms of syphilis is this. Um, you get to have um, parang, uh, what do you call this? Init, uh, what do you call that? Um, it's, it's, it's a sore sa, sa, ano, sa genital, but usually it does not have, um, it's not painful. So, you just have this, murag, napaso ang, ano, ang, if, if the male's genital, murag, na siya ikuan. Um, it's, what is this? Murag siya paso or burns, or what do you call that? Um, the ones in your mouth, um, mouth sores, it's, it's, yeah, yes. it's the same, but it, it's not painful sa genitals. Sometimes it's in the mouth also. Sometimes it's in the vagina. Sometimes it's in the anus. So it's important to get tested, especially when we are um, active. Um, the bacteria that causes this drills the skin. So, uh, uh, and it cures itself. So, dapat magpa-test so that... Um, it may appear na wala na sa skin, but it's actually in, in your system. So, kinalan magpa cure, magpa uh, mag, mag consult sa doctor. So, there are parasitic STIs, the pubic lice and scabies and trichomoniasis. Okay, so, pubic lice are this attach their lice to the pubic hair and feed on human blood. So it feeds on your blood. So they are microscopic and they need to be cured. Um, it's treatment, uh, next is trichomoniasis. Well, trichomoniasis are caused by a parasite and usually sexually transmitted but can survive on wet towels and bathing suits. So it's not recommended that you borrow towels and bathing suits because um, this can be transmitted without any sexual contact. So it's, I think it's the same with pubic lice. Pubic lice can also cannot be, um, may not be transmitted um, by sexual contact, but can be transmitted through infected um, areas. For example, public toilets. Um, and, and, uh, also we have scabies. The difference of scabies and pubic lice is that scabies borrows um, to, to un just underneath the skin and lay eggs. So the, sca the scabies mite can live for two to four days away from the human body. So again, um, this one, the parasitic na mga STIs are not necessarily transmitted through sexual contact. Some are transmitted um, through shared uh, towels, bathing suits, uh, public toilets, and um, underwears, if you're sharing underwears, things like that. So how to prevent this one? For trichomoniasis, condom will prevent the spread. Um, pubic lice and scabies avoid sharing towels that have not been washed and when trying to on bathing suits or under, uh, always wear something underneath. Although na wala magina pa try no ang underwear sa, sa mga department stores, but um, sometimes uh, bathing suits, I don't know if bathing suits are allowed, but just to be safe, do not borrow nor lend your bathing suits or trunks for men to avoid infections also. Um, there's intense itchiness, reddish rash and pain during sex or, ur or urination, and there are vaginal discharges. Uh, vaginal, dis vaginal discharge is for trichomoniasis. So how do we cure that? Um, there are specialized shampoos to kill the lice or scabies. 
lotion, and ointment, and antibiotic. Um, sometimes, um, sa usual, sa traditional medicine, some buys fresh meat and puts it sa, sa infected area so that the parasites will transfer sa fresh meat and it will leave your body. But it's always best to visit um, a dermatologist and um, a doctor so that it will be um, cured properly. So there are also viral STIs or caused by the virus. One is the human papilloma virus, the herpes and he hepatitis, and HIV and AIDS. So HPV are the warts causing, no? the warts causing virus. This is very contagious and some people never get symptoms and can be spread through skin-to-skin -skin contact. So if you have a mad no? and then a touch sa um, bodily fluid, sorry, so the IHPV, there's actually a chance that you'll get um, HPV. And some types cause genital warts and other types can cause cancer of the cervix. Uh, genital warts is very alarming because it can cause cancer also. So HPV, a treatment can be the wart can be removed, but can never be removed from the blood. It is a virus, and therefore it's, it will be in your system. And most warts will clear over time. Pero ang delikado, if the warts, uh, if the, vi the virus is causing new warts, that's, that will not clear over time, and later will cause cancer, skin cancer. And there is no cure for HPV. Only, only management and treatment. Um, so, so there's treatment. So I know you're, you know the difference about treatment and being, and being that as curable disease. You know, so treatment only um, special medication and freezing with liquid nitrogen is your therapy. So it um, because nga, hindi, hindi siya ma, ma, ano, hindi siya ma cure. So you can only treat and manage. So most of the time, um, people who have HPVs visit um, doctors to every six months to have these uh, warts removed. And there's um, a vaccine, I guess. Uh, there's a vaccine for HPV. So how can we reduce the chances of getting and spreading HPV? Do not share sex toys. Get HPV vaccine. But it does not replace using condom and dental dam. Use condom and dental dam every time you have sex, especially if um, these are just hookups. Uh, I know you. Uh, um, it is very, very to call this unusual to say, but most of teenagers right now engage with casual sex, and it's not a secret anymore. So if you do, please. Um, take care of yourselves. So talk to your partner. Um, using um, contraceptives such as condom is loving yourself. So please do so. And so this, these are some examples of HPV. These are severe cases, but look at this penis and anus. So we can conclude that sometimes uh, maybe this person is having um, anal penetra penetrative sex. So maybe that's the infected area, also this one. So these are examples. HPV. Now, um, genital herpes. This is um, caused by the virus also, herpes simplex virus, and HSV two is the most is more common and usually manifests in its, itself in the genital and anal area. Whereas HSV-1 is more likely to affect the mouth and lips in the form of cold sores. Cold sores are kana ng wala sa gihapon og ano. Um, it's not. I, I'm not sure if this is painful. But HSV-2 is the very common HPV. But herpes can be transmitted through kissing. Okay. Um, skin to skin contact. You can acquire already the virus through skin skin to skin contact. Um, oral, anal, and vaginal sex. Some people with herpes never develop sores but are still contagious and may spread it to others without knowing. 
people who have an initial outbreak can have more outbreaks throughout the rest of their life. Um, there are many stories over the internet um, that they just kiss a child and then um, they don't know they are they are in fact infected with herpes. So and also this is not curable. It is treatable. Um, there's treatment, but it's not curable because it is um, caused by a virus. So this is what it looks like. It's it looks like a cold sore. Yeah. So um have uh the, the texture of a herpes is somewhat the same with the tip of our nose. So if you touch the tip of your nose, that's the texture of um herpes. Sometimes it's um it's in your mouth. And most of the time, if it's H, it's um, HSV2, it's in the genital. Hepatitis. It's liver inflammation and can occur following excessive and prolonged consumption of alcohol or the use of certain medicine and drugs. And commonly caused by a virus. And there are several types of hepatitis. So HEPA. So it affects your liver and it can cause permanent liver disease and cancer for liver. But each uh, HEPA A and B can be prevented by vaccine, but there is no vaccine by, for hepatitis C. So there are three kinds, A, B, and C. And it is also not curable. It will be there for the rest of your life. So HEPA A is transmitted through the fecal oral route. If we do not wash our hands after we poop, or um, there are cases that um, in male-to-male -male sex, after the um, after anal penetration, it, the 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 other partner sucks the 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 penis from the anus, so it's kind of um, unsanitary. While each HEPA B is transmitted through blood and bodily fluids. HEPA C is transmitted through blood, but also through bodily fluids. So how can we lower our chances of getting H HEPA B and C? Get vaccinated, uh, safe sex, and do not share instruments, you know, like body piercing, tattooing, or hair removal. And do not share personal items such as toothbrush. Kinsa ba ang share toothbrush, no? Razors and needles, but sometimes we share razors um, when we to God this um, do our shaving because we sometimes you don't think it's it's un unsanitary, but it's really unsanitary. So hepatitis, it looks like this. It's the yellowish thing that happens to us. So having an STD can increase your chances of getting HIV. Why? Because any of those STDs um, makes you more um, vulnerable to the human immunodeficiency virus. So HIV and acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, HIV and AIDS. So quick facts, um, it infects only human beings and it, it destroys the body's ability to fight off diseases. When infected, the body's ability to fight off diseases is destroyed and it's re this renders the immune system defenseless and vulnerable to all forms of infection. Um, so this is how the infection happens. It's the successful entry of HIV and no body is immune, uh, usually asymptomatic in the span of five to ten years. It's a lifelong infection. Um, and, and sometimes you can get um, HIV if uh, the mother to child not transmission. Um, okay, so what is AIDS? AIDS is acquired, something you get instead of something you're born with. Um, you are immune, uh, so resistance or protection from disease, deficiency, absence of protective power, and syndrome, a variety of symptoms rather than one single disease. So AIDS is the name of, this, of the disease and HIV is the one that causes the disease. So caused by that, um, the human immunodeficiency virus is, um, because it is, is an opportunistic virus. Um, well, uh, there's no one who died of HIV, but of AIDS-related complications. 
um, when a person has AIDS, when their immune system is too weak to fight in fight of infection and they develop certain defining symptoms and illnesses. AIDS is the last stage of HIV when the infection is very advanced and is left untreated will lead to death. So here are the ways that on how we can um, acquire HIV, sex without condom, pass from mother to baby, sharing infected needles, and contaminated blood transfusion. But this is very rare now, um, the blood contamination through blood transfusions because there are tests being done when you um, donate blood. Uh, for sharing um, this one, this happens mostly with drug um, addicts. So some drugs are injected, the right? So um, sometimes they share needles. And sex without condom is the very common. So HIV can only be transmitted through five bodily fluids, blood, semen, breast milk, adrenal fluid, and the preseminal fluid, or the ones that we call pre-cum. Diba? Um, when ang lalaki mag-ejaculate, there's pre-cum. No? Um, so delete siya. Most of the time, delete siya makuan. Delete siya. You cannot feel that there's pre-cum already. So, but it carries the virus. Um, this is a video. Let me share this with you through um, YouTube. This is how um, HIV is being, being treated. It, it's called um, the antiretroviral viral therapy. Hold on. Share. Okay. Okay. The human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, is a retrovirus that replicates itself within the bloodstream. After contracting HIV through certain bodily fluids, the body's immune system engages in a losing battle with the virus. As HIV circulates through the bloodstream, it attaches to some cells and repurposes them to produce more virus. Using the host cell's machinery, the virus creates new HIV. In a process called budding, the immature virus is released into the bloodstream where it matures and can infect other cells. As the replicated virus continues to spread throughout the bloodstream, it begins to hamper the body's immune system, destroying white blood cells known as T cells, which are an integral part of the immune system. HIV is treated with antiretroviral medications. These drugs are given in combinations and are referred to as antiretroviral therapy. ART disrupts the ability of the virus to reproduce itself. If a person living with HIV adheres to their ART regimen, the virus can be reduced to almost undetectable levels within the bloodstream. Nowadays, a person living with HIV can stay healthy and are less likely to transmit the infection onto others. The research on HIV continues, and scientists remain focused on discovering a cure and a vaccine within our lifetime. So um, that's antiretroviral therapy. So for HIV, since it has no cure, um, we only have the therapy, um, which is for free, um, provided by our government for those um, people living with HIV. Hold on, let me share my screen again. So it can only be managed but um, it cannot be cured. So that's um, the therapy, the anti antiretroviral therapy. And most often, no, um, people living with HIV does not um, 
present themselves to access this government provided medication because of the stigma they face. So that's why we are here as channels of hope. That there will always be hope for people living with HIV. There are there are counseling that's available. Um, if you get um, an HIV test, there will be pre-counseling and post-counseling for those um, wanting to access the the test. Uh, these are done through our social hygiene clinics in your locality. Uh, I don't know um, in your city health office. I think there's. Um, a social hygiene clinic. If there's love yourself, pH in your area, there's also they're also providing um, counseling and free testing. So if you are sexually active, please um, have yourselves tested. So how to prevent STIs? So the only the only hundred percent way to pre uh, to prevent STI and pregnancy is through abstinence. Nothing more, nothing less. But um, again, it's your it's your body, it's your right over your body if you want to engage with sexual activity. So, but abstinence is not to do something and abstain from different levels of sexual activity. And possible choices for sexual abstinence between two people could be avoiding vaginal anal intercourse, avoiding genital contact, oral genital contact, avoiding genital, genital contact. So. Um, if you choose to be sexually active, please use protective barriers such as condoms and dental dams and birth control. If you choose to be active, and it's your choice. Um, delay sexual activity until you are older, or maybe um, when you are stable enough to provide for the child that you will be bearing. And what are some reasons why not to engage in sexual activity? Well, um, sexual health and decision making must have the concept of consent and communication in a relationship. We'll talk more of consent later. So, in summary, um, keep informed, be informed about STIs and how to protect yourself, and talk to a parent, teacher, a trusted adult. Though these are the basics that we can just share with you because the decision will always be yours to make. Um, if you want to engage with sexual activity, then it's your choice. So, hold on. so we, uh, I'll move on to promoting reproductive health. If, if you have questions later, we can um, uh, entertain that after the, the, some of the slides. So reproductive health is your complete physical, mental, and social well-being and does not merely the absence of disease. I'm sorry, my dog is barking outside. I don't know if you can hear, hear the dog. Um, but I hope it does not uh, disturb you. Um, so these are you know, the in all matters relating to your reproductive system and to its functions and processes. Um, most of the time, you no, know, we wonder why is the male reproductive organ is erect every time we wake up, and that's um, a fact, you no, know? uh, because um, it prevents the. It prevents your urine to go to your uh, na mag na makontaminate ng mga yung sperm para di ka mabaog. So that's the reason why it's erect in the morning. So there are different kinds of contraception. This uh, this LARC, hormonal barrier, emergency contraception, fertility awareness, and permanent contraception. Let's go um over them one by one. So LARCs are for long lasting and 99% effective. Examples are IUD and implant. IUD is five to 10 years. It's a tiny device that is being put in your uterus to prevent pregnancy. It's long-term but reversible and most most one of the most effective birth methods. For implant naman, it's, um, it's, it's on the size of a matchstick and it's placed under the skin of the upper arm and three to five years in young duration. So that's the longer, the long, uh, long acting reversible contraception. So again, this is, these are reversible. And the IUD and the implant. So there are hormonal naman na contraception. Uh, hormonal contraceptives includes the pills that we can buy sa, sa drugstore and the Depro-Provera injection. Let's see what is it 
So the pill is, um, you can take one each day. So it looks like this. Sometimes it's free in our sexual, uh, in, our, in the clinics. No, The pill is more than 99% effective if you are using it properly. And combined oral contraceptive pill. Uh, you can take every day to stop being pregnant. So these are the kinds of the pills that you can take. No, The combined pill contains the hormones, estrogen, and the progesterone, progestogen. So the progestogen is the only contraceptive pill that prevents pregnancy by thickening the mucus in the cervix. So these are the two kinds of pills that you can buy sa atong na, na butika. Or you can ask from the um, reproductive health centers from your... Um, Rural Health Unit or the what do you call it, your city health office in Cagayan. So the injectable, naman, the one that we call injectable, you no, know, is another type of the hormonal contraception that you can get an injection every three months. If you don't want to drink um, this, these pills, uh, injection is uh, the injectable is is also advisable so here's the barrier method and the barrier method is the condom that stops the sperm from entering the vagina and condoms is the most common that we use to prevent STIs and as well as unintended pregnancy while pills and um, the hormonal no, and the long uh, acting reversible contraception can prevent um, pregnancy, but it's it's the the condoms that prevents STI through the barrier method. Um, emergency. There's also emergency contraception that refers to um, the ones that we use after sexual intercourse. There are two kinds: the emergency contraceptive pill and the copper IUD. Um, while condoms, no, most are are designed for men. There are also condoms that are designed for women. Um, it's uh, I, I don't have a sample, but the ones that we are very uh, common like it is the is the condom for men. Okay, so the emergency contraceptive pill is taken af up to three days after unprotected sex, and um, if you are an average, if you are on the average weight, the ECP is ninety eight percent. But if you more, if you weigh more than seventy kilograms now, the ECP is less effective. And a copper IUD is recommended. So this is the copper IUD that can be inserted up, up to five days naman after unprotected sex. And 99% effective siya for preventing pregnancy. But again, this does not prevent um, HIV and other STIs. So emergency contraception are only being used if you did not use protection, if um, the condom splits, no, if if the, the condom break, so you can use um this one. Um, if you have been vomiting or had diarrhea while on the pill, if you missed more than once of your contraceptive pill, if you have missed your injection and you have been forced to have sex without contraception, if, that means if if you have been raped. So this one, ito yung pinapagamit. Uh, you should not use ECP as a regular method of contraception. Okay, it's not regular. That's why it's called emergency for a reason. So um, there's also fertility awareness, um, the ones that we call the calendar method. But this is intended for um, couples already, um, married couples, who's trying to do um, family planning. But for us, uh, our, our first um, advice is abstinence, and if not, use condom. So there, there's also the permanent contraception, that's vasectomy and tubal ligation. So, you know, um, tubal ligation is when we cut the, 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 the passage of the egg cell. And while for vasectomy, naman, we cut the passage of the um, sperm cells. So we also promote health promotion in schools. This is one of the ways that the school-based reproductive health education is linked with better health and reproductive health outcomes. Because most of the time, we share our um, stories of sex, stories of our frustrations, 
our fantasies with our friends rather than our parents. No, si kinsa ba ang mag ano magsulti si ang parents na na kay crush na gusto gusto ka ano or nag nagiyot mo si mo crush, de ba? No one does that. But most of the time you talk it, you 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 discuss it with their friends, na especially guys. Most of the guys would talk this over, but this is that's um that's toxic masculinity. Um. So that's why we want to um, promote this one in school so that you. Uh, that peer education may be um, promoted also, but of course this must include um, sexual initi uh, delayed sexual initiation, a lower frequency of sexual intercourse, and fewer sexual partners. Um, multiple sex pa sex partners does not automatically mean that you'll get STIs, but will increase your chances of getting STIs. So um, okay. Peer education. Peer education is the process whereby some uh, well-trained and motivated young people undertake informal or organized educational activities. So uh, uh, that's why, because we talk more uh, to our friends and discuss with them things that we do not discuss with our parents or some of our trusted adults. Because maybe we are ashamed or maybe we're afraid we'll get, we'll get scolded or things like that. Um, so these are the advantages for of peer education for young people that um, they'll get to have an, a clear information about sensitive issues such as sexual behavior, reproductive health, STIs, normal ba na when I see a girl, I get erected, normal ba that when I do this, it's this and that. Um, it breaks cultural norms and taboos also. As what I've mentioned earlier, our, our goal is to normalize talking about sex. It is combined with training that is user friendly and offers opportunities to discuss concerns between equals in a relaxed environment. Because um, as what we've noticed you know, with our with our discussions in the community, most of the time when there are people from the city health office, there are people from the Department of Health talking about this, it seems to be a very medical issue and it creeps people out. But if we, but when friends, when the, of the same status, of the same age, talk about this, people are becoming more open to talk about sex and sexual behaviors. Sometimes um, we talk how and how, sometimes no, um, there's too much information when we talk about sex, when we talk with our peers. But when there's guidance counselor coming in, when there's um, certified counselors coming in, we are becoming instantly muted and are not willing to disclose this information. That's why peer education is relevant for all of us. And because it's participatory, and no one forces you to disclose also. Um, family life. We want that families also are talking about sex in their table, during meals, during normal conversations, because no one can pr better protect our family than us. So, um, an effective family life education helps young people to finish their education and reach adulthood without early pregnancy. Because um, the more we become open to talking about sex, the more it is easy for the ch for children, for young people such as you, to open up your feelings and your um, uh, desires to your parents. That they can also guide you throughout um, your journey as until the time is right for you to have sex. Then community conversation. We want to have community-based conversation of HIV and AIDS because we want to end the stigma. And we want to raise awareness that STIs and STDs are not, what do you call this, are not punishments from the Lord. Okay, they are not punishments from the Lord. But of course, our, our actions have its equal consequences. Therefore, we need to um, educate um, community members about HIV and AIDS, about STIs, because many, many, uh, many myths are there in the community. For instance, if you have gonorrhea, some people will just say, "We just uh, uh, dissolve Tide and drink Tide; it will be cured." But it does not, because Tide is not edible. Things like that. Um, if uh, you have uh, gonorrhea, you just drink a lot of of coconut water because it will be cured, things like that. Um, these are 
common, very common misconception, but and has been existing for ages. But it's not um, leaving our communities because we are ashamed to talk about sex. Our experience when we did sex Z is that we asked some of the mothers attending the session on translating the things that I asked you earlier to translate also. And they can't even they can't even mention it because it feels to them that they are being harassed talking about these things. But in our generation, we want to raise um, the bar higher and normalize talking about sex. So why is it important to talk about and to promote reproductive health? Um, because it helps us in preventing and treating STIs, including HIV and AIDS. In addition, reproductive health care can bring patients into the healthcare system, encouraging diagnosis and treatment of other diseases and conditions. Again, um, early detection, you know, aside from um, prevention, is better than cure, but early detection is the key moving forward also. Because if it if if the gonorrhea is in is on the early stage pala, it can be cured already. It, it will not lead to fertility problems. If HIV is detected at an early stage also, it uh, you can take the therapy earlier. So you will not have to suffer the um, the opportunities, opportunistic diseases brought by the virus. Things like that. Um, and what's that here? So of course, when, when talking about sex, we also want to encourage you to exercise your rights. Because as we've mentioned earlier, you know, it's a shared responsibility. Sex is a shared responsibility. And more, more than girls, I want to encourage boys to, in, to exercise your rights. Because one girl can get pregnant in, a, in the span of nine months. But men, if we are not careful, we can we can get have girls get pregnant, nine girls pregnant in nine hours. So um, more than girls being educated of this, it's us boys or men who must exercise our rights properly. Number one, the age of consent. In the Philippines right now, the age of consent is twelve. But um, for child rights organizations, um, they are pursuing for 15 as the age for um, age of consent. And the Philippines is the lowest age to determine statutory rape in Asia and one of the lowest in the world. Remember that when you have sex with um, persons aging 17 years old and below, that will always be considered as rape. Especially if it's done with 12 because whether with consent or not, that is already rape. And also for those, um, if you had sex with um, persons with disabilities, that will always be considered as rape if they are not able to um, better protect themselves or have decision for themselves. So there are 13 reproductive health rights. One is the right to life, that no one of us is must be denied of our right to life and no woman should be put at risk by the reason of pregnancy, gender, or lack of access to health information and services. This includes the right to be safe and satisfying sex. Again, remember, sex is always satisfying, but it has to be safe. And it has to be sex with consent because everything that is out without consent is a baby. Number two is the right to liberty and security of the person. So women, no, men, please remember that even if you're married already, you do not have the right to force a woman to be pregnant. So there's no woman should be subjected to forced pregnancy, forced sterilization, or forced abortion. It will always be on the choice of the woman. Now, number three is the right to equality and to be free from all forms of discrimination. If you'll get to have your um, sexuality education where you will discuss gender, um, gender roles, gender identity, sex, sexual expression, you'll know um, that's where we'll understand that everyone, among all other things, freedom from discrimination because of one's sexuality and reproductive life choices is important. 
that no one must be discriminated for their choices. Um, it's their choice if they want to have sex. It's their choice on how many sexual partners that they will have. But it will never be our choice to discriminate them. Because it's up to them. Again, if we have the right information, then um, we all have the right to. And we, we must exercise our rights and share others also what we know. Right to privacy. When we get tested, um, no one is allowed to share our, our results and any other um, information in terms of our um, sometimes sometimes kasi, uh, when people get um, tested no they think that it will be shared to others the results that's why they are afraid but um, our law is providing us with um, privacy that no one must know and no one must share your health status to others and no one can access your records or reports unless it's for medical reason the freedom of thought, no, that we can um, think, that we can that uh, share our thoughts and think freely. The right to IEC, to uh, to information education, it, this includes to full information on the benefits, risk, and effectiveness of all methods of fertility regulation, in order to that all decisions taken are made on the basis of full free and informed consent. This is the one that I'm always um, emphasizing. It has to be full consent, free consent, and informed consent. Because other than that, it's no longer consent. And the right to choose whether or not to marry and found and plan a family. So this includes your right to um, against any requirement to marry without your consent. It is also in, this also includes the right of individuals to choose to remain single without discrimination or coercion. So, so when we tease pala other people that they are not having their part, lifetime partners, we are actually violating their rights because we are maybe discriminating, bullying them, and coercing them to marry even if they don't want to. And right to decide whether or when to have children. Again, you can decide freely if you want to have 12 children, then be it. If you want, you don't want to have children, then be it. And the spacing of your children and access to related information and education. So right to healthcare and health protection. This includes the right of clients to the highest possible quality of healthcare and the right to be free from harmful traditional practices. Because... Um, there's always social hygiene clinics in every city, so please um, make use of this. So that um, some, I'm not saying that traditional medicine is wrong, but um, seeking professional help would always be best. The right to the benefits of scientific progress. Um, it is our right to always be informed of scientific progress. Should there be a cure to HIV already, we must know. There. Um, or any or to HPV maybe if there's a cure we must know to herpes we must know so this is our right of um, um, sexual and reproductive health services to avail of the new reproductive technologies that are safe effective and acceptable number 12 is the right to be free from torture and ill treatment so all of us men women young people are must be must be protected from violence, sexual exploitation, and abuse. And the right to develop. You have access to equal access to development opportunities and benefits, especially in the decision making process that affect your life. Especially if um, you you are discussing about um, permanent contraceptions, you no, know, um, it is your right to decide for yourself. So. What's bodily autonomy and consent? Because we are nobody's object. So the principle of bodily integrity sums up to the right of each human being, including children, to autonomy and self-determination over their own body. So again, um, consent has to be informed, not circumstantial. Drunk consent is not consent, and a no is a no, and a yes is a yes. Most of the time, even though nag uh, the person gave you the consent at the beginning of the sexual intercourse, but in the middle, the person said no, then it is, it is already a no. Um, because consent is not absolute. 
So sexual harassment should not happen in Liceo. It should not happen anywhere because sexual harassment is sexual harassment can can happen anywhere, and we must not tolerate it. As learned individuals, we have the opportunity to be at, to be in school to be educated. You must be very vigilant not to allow harassment to take place anywhere. So how, what does it look like? Harassment can happen verbally, physically, and the use of graphics. So the cases of sexual harassment, say I'll, I'll run through this. So three in five women have experienced sexual harassment at least once in their lifetime, according to the social weather station. And 80% of women who are 18 to 24 years old have experienced sexual harassment at least once in their life. So that includes wolf whistling, lascivious language, talking, voyeurism, groping, rubbing or touching, catcalling, indecent gestures, exhibitionism, public masturbation, sending of pornographic pictures or videos, and cyber violence. So um, I'll skip the regional because this is for um, Western Visayas. For policies, no, we have we have RA seven eight seven seven and the Bawal Bastos Law. RA seven 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 eight seven seven is the Anti Sexual Harassment Act of nineteen ninety five, an act declaring sexual harassment unlawful in employment, education, or training environment, and for other purposes. So the Bawal Bastos Act, naman, is the newly enacted law that um, imposes stiffer penalties on a range of acts. From cut calling, sexist slurs, stalking and cyber stalking, wolf whistling, leering and intrusive gazing, intrusive gazing, taunting, wanted and unwanted invitations, misogynistic, transphobic, and homophobic slurs. So this also covers who um, the law, uh, those who give unwanted comments on one's appearances, relentless requests for personal details and use of words gestures or actions that ridicule on the basis of sex, gender, sexual orientation, identity, and or expression. So these are the Bawal Bastos um, acts that uh, is being published online that you can go through. But this is the first degree offense, second degree offense, third degree offense, and the fourth degree offense. So our um, cyber violence and cyber bullying, cyber stalking, cyber sex, is covered by the fourth degree offense and is um, punishable by law by two years of, of two years four months up to four years two months of prison time and or uh, 100,000 to 100,000 500,000 fine or both so um i have to, to say this most of our local government unit officials does not know that there's RA-11313 already or the Bawal Bastos Act. And most of them, uh, when you listen to them, they will always say that there's no protection for male, for, for men who are being abused or, or violated. Actually, there is. That's why there, there's this 11313 who covers all genders, all sexes, all sexual identities and gender um, uh, identities also, sexual expressions. Um, so... If you have the chance to educate others, please do so because this is very integral in our times right now as, case, as, as the cases of rape is getting high. Um, so the, I know you're familiar with uh, the Me Too movement. So um, because out of 10 respondents have been sexually harassed at their workplaces, so the majority of offenses take place during um, dinners. So there, these are women chatting Me Too. So right now in the Philippines, I think there was a time that um, there, the sexual harassment um, offenses were highlighted also in the social media. And there's um, a movement calling to end sexual harassment also. Uh, so this is the NITO movement. <clears throat> so, so teenage pregnancy. Um, this will be, will be very quick. I know it's 3.46, you have 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, let me do this quick. So there are 196,000 mothers who became mothers at the age of 15 to 19. And that is alarming. That's according to the Population Commission. And 24 children are born to, to, to teenage mothers. And that increases um, <clears throat> dropout rate in the Philippines. And 
in well in Negros Occidental, I'm not sure with Cagayan de Oro. Ten years old is the youngest case of a mother. And when during the time that we did this presentation, but recently there's nine years old who became a mom, and that's very sad. Um, it's 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 alarming to know that it's happening, but we need to work for this. Especially, um, I went there in Cagayan de Oro, I think back in 2017, to gather stories of prostituted children um, while I was working with World Vision then. Um, the cases are high, um, but we can do something about it. I'm sure that after this, we'll be more aware of what's going on. Thus, I encourage you to report cases of abuse cases of, of exploitation, especially on our children, because they are stealing our children. They are stealing our future. So teenage pregnancy are the global, pro global problem, but mostly it occurs in poorer and marginalized communities. And girls have are facing considerable pressure to marry early and become mothers while they are still a child. And I can attest to this. Right now in the areas where we work here in Negros, um, Child, uh, child marriage has become a custom to some, and it's alarming. Teenage pregnancy increases when girls or women are, are girls are denied the right to make decisions about their sexual and reproductive health and well-being. Again, and when we go back to the previous topic that we've talked to, it's always um, why we need uphold, we need to uphold our reproductive health because each girl has their right to decide. So girls must be able to make their own decisions about their bodies and futures and have the access to appropriate healthcare services and education. Um, I think this is common, no? When uh, you, are, you are in a relationship, most of the time, maybe not all, no? But most of the time, uh, couples engage in sex. Sometimes, nagkakalabuan uh, because some are not engaged in sex. And sometimes people are forcing their partners to have sex for the reason of love. But there's no love that will force you to do things you don't want to do. And that dishonors your, your, yourself also. So the causes are one, um, lack of information about sexual and reproductive health and rights, inadequate access to services tailored to young people. So there's a, a social pressure to marry, sexual violence, um, child early and forced marriage and lack of education. Um, <clears throat> early and forced marriage are now being discussed with uh, a new law authored by uh, by the Honorable Hontiveros, the No More Children Having Children. That's, that's part of the campaign. Um, but there are some customs right now, uh, maybe in some communities there in Mindanao, that are practicing um, child marriage. And according to their customary laws, it's not against their law, but we need still to make, uh, to double our efforts to educate that the uterus of the child is not ready to bear a child yet. And that leads to, com um, that leads to, uh, what do you call this, complications and deaths to children. Adolescent pregnancy remains a major contributor to maternal and child mort mortality. Complications relating to pregnancy and childbirth are the leading causes of death for girls ages 15 to 19. Some, um, usahay no na atay uyab na um, below 18, and some of us are 18, so sometimes we do not consider it as um, something, as an issue, but actually it is an issue because um, maybe we are having sex with someone who is uh, below 18 years old. And there's a case in one of the hospitals here in Negros. It's 15 years old. Um, he is 23. The girlfriend is 15. And the girlfriend got pregnant. Case who got um, child abuse already. Pregnant girls and adolescents also face other health risks and complications due to their immature bodies. So babies born to younger mothers are also at great risk. Okay, dili pagani fully developed ang um, reproductive organ. So it will all it will really um, create complications. So for many adolescents, pregnancies and childbirth are neither planned 
nor wanted. Kinsa ba nga bata ang ganahan nga mag mag ano no, ma, maburos kanang at an early age? No one. So some 3.9 million unsafe abortions occur in each year to girls ages to 15 to 19 in developing regions, especially in the Philippines that um that abortion is not legal. There will always be cases of undocumented abortion that lead to more deaths to our women. So boys, please be responsible. Also girls, please love yourselves, um, protect yourselves. So it has a negative social and economic effects. And girls who become pregnant before age 18 are also most likely to experience violence within the marriage or partnership. So these are the few signs no, that can indicate pregnancy, but the only thing that we can confirm is through a pregnancy test. And to prevent is that abstinence, contraception, delaying sex, and we want to empower others. Share to others what we know and what we know so that they will also be empowered to, to better protect themselves. Again, you always have the right to say no and honor that no. When a person says no, it will always be a no because the no will never mean yes when we force them. It will always be a no. More than more than us um, discussing, discussing, um, I'll skip peer education because we've covered that a bit earlier. More than us uh, discussing the use of contraception, the use of condoms. It's about you protecting yourself and empowering others. And it's about you also honoring the rights of others. Because most of the time we are too full of ourselves that we forget to honor the rights of others, especially when it comes to sex. Especially when we are requesting sex from or asking sex from our partners. When they say no, it will always be no because it is their body. It is your body and you have the right over it. And please do not share your nude pictures to your boyfriends or to anybody else. Because in the internet, there's ad infinitum and we don't know where it will be. And in the internet, there's forever. Even though it's deleted, it will, it will always be there forever. I'm not here to scare you, to scare you off, because you're, you're old enough to understand things such as this. And you have the decisions by yourselves. If you want to send your dick pics, your, your pussy pics, whatever that is, to whoever, that's your choice. But I uh, know the consequences in the future. I, I myself, I'm not really, I don't care of what you want with your sexual life. Because that's yours. Because that's the decision for you to make. But I want you to know and I want you to understand but if you feel not being loved, then this is your way of maybe feeling loved. There will always be people who love you even though you don't know that they love you. You have your parents with you, you have your teachers with you that loves you. And true love respects. If the person loves you, it will respect you, it will respect your right as a person. Again, informed, free, and um, full consent. Please always remember that. I think um, that's it from my end. If you have questions, please uh, let me know. Um, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, I guess a virtual round of applause from everyone. So does anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none, thank you very much, class. And thank you, Kevin, for sharing your your um, valuable knowledge no, on reproductive health no, and in sexuality education in general. So um, let's see here. Okay, so as of now, class, I'm going to dismiss you already. But Kevin, is it okay if we can just talk for a little bit? Uh, just, yeah, just like for a minute or a minute. Parang ano, a, chat, a chat lang for a little. Um, thank you very much, Kevin. So, uh, class, uh, since nobody has any questions anymore, so thank you again for coming in class today. Well, um, I would like you to take note of any reflections you have this afternoon because this will be part of the prelim project, which will be due on March 13. 
So uh, if you can take time after this to to write a journal, no, that would be good. And then um, kindly read the the post that I will post or that I have posted on Google Classroom because um, the instructions for this week will be there. And the prelim project will also be explained and posted in the classroom. So I expect that after this, you can actually start with your prelim project actually after I post the posts. Appeal na siya sa inyong projects sa prelims. So um, thank you, class. Uh, I'll see you on, we will meet each other next week na dayon on March 1, okay? So uh, thanks again, class, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.